What do you get when an IRL streamer goes to a war-torn country that is third world and filled with nothing but gangs and violence and guns and all these other things? You get somebody being kidnapped. So YouTuber, your fellow Arab, who started off as a Fortnite streamer being really competitive in the space, becoming one of the best and even going on to coach people, had to make a content pivot shift when things were going bad in that space and the death of Fortnite or just the transition from that type of content to something a little bit different, which ultimately became IRL videos vlog style videos, content where he came up out of his chair and had to go out into the real world. But what we talk about a lot on this channel is that when you go down the paths of being an IRL content creator and then turning into an IRL streamer, you get certain stigmas behind you because you fall into this trap of having to one up yourselves again and again and again. And that will hold no different for a YouTuber, your fellow Arab, as he started to do different things that were probably borderline cringy or edgy, but then that led him down this path of, you know, traveling to different countries countries, different continents, and dealing with people who were a part of the world's underbelly. It all started out when he started to do these spending a day with or living 24 hours with people with various cultural backgrounds, which is very commendable. He was educating himself as to how other people lived in all these other worlds, becoming more enlightened and becoming more world renowned and, you know, a renaissance man, very knowledgeable person. But then that started having him hang out with people that were in like the Mexican cartel and some Somali pirates and some gang members living in various different slums, hanging out with terrorists, being in the Middle East, hanging with different people to learn their cultural identities and backgrounds is not a bad thing. It lets you know about different people's experiences, cognizant of their situations, and the things that they live with on a day-to-day -day basis, especially coming from a country like America where we seem to be so individualistic and don't really have empathy for people outside of this country. It is good to see those perspectives. But what he very much so underestimated is how dangerous and harmful these countries can be. So then we start getting the reports that flood from people like Keemstar and other media outlets. Arab was kidnapped in Haiti. He's been missing for two weeks. And sometimes people like Keemstar like to troll and stuff like that, even though they seem to have a close relationship. But as the details started to pour out, it became quite clear that this time, him getting close to these different people was a huge mistake. YouTuber, your fellow Arab, has allegedly been kidnapped by a gang in Haiti and is being held for ransom. He was planning on interviewing gang lord Babaraku, and the reported ransom figure is $600,000. Arab and I had exchanged messages in the past way before this incident and he came across as a genuinely kind-hearted guy or good person sending prayers in hopes he comes out of this safely. Now I would like to think that Arab had great intentions for what he was doing. I've even seen some of his other videos and he does seem like a genuine guy. However in the back of my mind I could only think that this has to be a dumb move every single time he did it. And of course he came out alive or unscathed in a lot of these situations but to test your luck like that time and time again could not be the best way to play the hands that you're dealt with. They even have a picture of the guy right here, Lanmo Sanjo, who they're saying is the person in Haiti who has captured him. This guy is wanted by the FBI in the United States because apparently he is so organized and does so many mass kidnappings that it is ridiculous. Like last year, Haiti reported 3,000 kidnappings and this guy is supposedly over the top of the kidnapping sex work conglomerate that is going on in Haiti right now. And we even have a video of the guy that he was supposed to be interviewing down in Haiti to get an understanding as to what's going on in that country. He's not responsible for all the violence sweeping across Haiti's capital, but be under no doubt he's at the center of it. His fighters are never far away. Is this now all your territory? Because it, it was an open road when I was last here. Yeah. Jimmy Cherizia, universally referred to here as Barbecue, is the head of one of the most powerful gangs in Port-au-Prince. But he's also the head of a gang consortium that's brought Haiti to its knees. He took us through the roadblocks of buses they've put in place to stop police raids on his territory. That territory now extends over one of the city's main roads, an economic highway he controls in its entirety. Barbecue sees himself as a revolutionary for the people and he rails against corrupt politicians and oligarchs. So based off of my research, it seems that Haiti is just a completely war-torn country and is in like dire straits right now. After a couple of attempts and, you know, natural disasters and stuff like that, they put a leader into place, but that leader was assassinated a couple years ago. And ever since then, things have gone totally downhill for the country. And it is left to being a bunch of gang territories who are controlled by this guy, Barbecue. And so you would think that even though he's done interviews before with other people, that this would not be a place 
place that your fellow Arab would go to. But that's not the case. He saw this as a place that needed to be seen, needed to be heard from, which I can commend a little bit, but still at some point you have to say that you're pressing your luck again. And as we look at the last known images of him being on camera before he was kidnapped, you gotta think that he could have moved just a little bit smarter in a lot of these instances. So we actually cannot leave to Port-au-Prince until the morning because it's already 6 p.m. and if we leave right now, we'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. We'll get there while it's dark and that place is completely run by gangs. So you don't wanna be dealing with the gangs even though we have safe passage, we're already approved. All it takes is one stupid gang member holding an AK-47 for one thing to go wrong. So we're not taking that risk at night. We're gonna be leaving at three in the morning I just really wanted to show you guys the view from this hotel. So it's interesting that he even himself acknowledges this is a very, very, very dangerous place to be living. This is a dangerous place to be visiting. Nobody's coming in, nobody's coming out just because of how corrupt and war-torn this country is right now. We are the only people in this entire hotel. Why would he say Everybody that? Everybody else is workers, employees, etc. because no one's allowed into the fucking country. So there's no tourists here, okay, other than those Royal Caribbean guys. But I have the entire hotel to myself. Look at that view, man. You got the mountain range. You got the sun setting. Okay, you have entire Cap Haitian over here. And we've got a pool, which I wasn't going to take advantage of, but how many times in your life are you the only person in an entire hotel because the country's completely shut down, no one should be coming in, and you're just a retarded YouTuber. I think you acknowledging that multiple times in the video signifies how dumb you are. You continuing to say that time and time again, letting people know that, hey, I am rolling a certain way. I am being paraded around the city in a certain type of way. Now he does go around with some sort of security. He does have some of these things, but none of the parameters that he has set in place ultimately prevented these situations from happening. And it seems that social media took wind to this and they started commenting on it. And people seem to be a little torn on the ways that they reacted to this he has some friends on the internet his editor and stuff that have commented this is from Laylim, a friend of his tried keeping it private for two weeks but is getting out everywhere yes arab has been kidnapped in haiti and we're working on getting him out love y'all he'll be out soon and even a good friend of his and a good friend of ours on the show sneeko had some commentary about him being kidnapped as well arab has been kidnapped in haiti he's been kidnapped for 15 days um your fellow arab the youtuber our good friend and love speech mess um love speech member so free Arab and, and prayers for Arab. <laughs> I'm always dying to know what Sneeko thinks at times like this. Like, I always look forward to what he has to say at times like this, especially when his good friends are in dire situations. I was been kidnapped um, for 15 days. I just saw an article. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Random, random announcement. I know. God, hard-hitting investigative journalism from Sneeko. Just gotta love it, you got to. And of course, XQC and Aiden Ross had to say some things about it. This is the last footage of Arab uploaded before he got click, kidnapped. Click, click on chat, okay, so we can set some time, so I can so I read it. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I like reading chat. Uh, let's see. Leeko linked it. Let's see what Leeko... But their reaction wasn't even the thing that got me most concerned. It was the comments that were in the comment section that were kind of against Arab. Bartholomew Jenkins says, Hey, I'm a rich YouTuber in a shithole country and I'm all alone in my hotel. Come and kidnap me. Tybino says, Traveling to a third world country during war and gets kidnapped. No way. Who Man Play says, This is what happens when you think you're a main character. Now, I'm not condoning of your Arab getting kidnapped at all. I think it's a, kind of disgusting. It's harmful. I hope he gets out of the situation safe. But I've got to agree with them to a certain extent. Sure, we could say that he's doing some great or some even good by shedding light on some of these situations in which people don't know how or what happened to these countries and how they got there because this is unfiltered and real investigative journalism. He is sitting down with these people. However, with that being said, you have to do your due diligence and make smarter decisions. One, a lot of people rely on you. And two, these people don't feel the most positive way about outsiders from other countries, especially if you're American. They don't feel positively about you all the time. And and while it would seem so hunky-dory and pessimistic to think that you could go to these different parts of the country and live your life and everything would be just say la vie, that's just not the case in a lot of these countries. There was a travel vlog couple who had went to India and they were walking around the streets where they had gotten beaten up, the woman in the situation had gotten gang raped. And then they had went to the hospital to treat their injuries and their wounds and to report the situation like people would think that they do in a regular country. And even in that situation, they had gotten beat up and 
raped again at the hospital. There was also another CNN reporter from London who had went to India and had experienced her own forms of trauma and sexual harassment. She's doing a live report. And the minute that the light went out, the minute that the light went out, suddenly I was groped, I was grabbed, I was, my clothes were torn. Uh, I literally had to fight to get out of that group. And so let's go ahead and look at this tape so that you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. This was live on television. Marilyn, I gotta get out of here. So tell me, yes. Tell her why should be out there. The dangers of going to these other countries, especially for somebody who's not totally familiar with the surroundings or does not look like somebody from these countries already, are overwhelming. And they're undeniable, to be quite honest with you. If I were a lot of people, especially during this political climate, this economic climate and things like that, I wouldn't be looking to travel to any sort of countries like this that aren't developed to the extent of like the US or some of the European countries. We can see in plenty of examples like ones that I showed or Brittany Griner that as an outsider, you will be totally treated differently than if you were an insider in the country or if you were somebody that looked like a familiar face. And because they don't have the same laws, rules, and regulations that govern us as American people, you've got to be extremely careful. I, I would like to say that, hey, what he does, your fellow Arab as a content creator is very necessary for a lot of people. But if it means risking life and limb, then I don't know if I would implore him to continue down these paths. I hope he does get out and I hope some of his streamer friends or whoever can help pitch in because it looks like this guy had struck lightning in a bottle with being able to reinvent himself in the content creation space which is very hard to do i hope nothing but good luck and good wishes to him prayers up to your fellow arab for real for real so i was late putting this video out because i had some editing issues but i'm glad i waited because we have some breaking news it seems that your fellow arab has been released from his captivity and of course he had to take to twitter to let everyone know who was concerned about him and his well-being that he was now released he says i was kidnapped purely for the color of my skin i was kidnapped for being a blonde and when we do a Google Translate of that word, Blanc, of course, means white. Can't give any more details till I'm home, but all I will say for now is glory be to God, released between Good Friday and Easter, Christ is King. When you're kidnapped in the middle of the Haitian desert, 60 minutes away from any civilization, in a concrete shack surrounded by barbed wire, you don't pray to a rainbow flag, you pray to God. Now, I would like to say, of course, that it is great that he was able to be freed, uh, specifically on Easter, you know, weekend and Good Friday and all that stuff, but the unnecessary necessary jab at the lgbtq community just showed us that he's an asshole at the end of the day i did get some more backstory on the guy and it, it seems like he's not the best person in the world but what did i expect from an irl streamer especially he's going on twitter saying the n-word and he's clearly a white man listen i think that there is a lesson in all of this stuff don't go to any countries if you don't know the climate even if you're doing it for investigative journalism reasons but you know what do i know in all this